Hello and welcome to another episode of Laying Down the Lore, a monthly podcast in which we aim to separate our ghouls from our goblins, our snotlings from our skaven storm fiends, and our bloodthirsters from our bloodletters, and generally ask, what's up with this Warhammer stuff? My name is Ben Crone Barber and I know fuck all about Warhammer. With me is my co-host Christopher Crowlin Allen, hey up, who also knows fuck all about Warhammer. It's true. <laughs> and my dear brother Darren, bully! who knows so much about Warhammer, it's a wonder he has time to do anything else. After gathering online to slay some vermin in the name of Sigmar, this dichotomy between our levels of understanding became clear, and this series is an attempt to address that ignorance. Ignorance. Hello, fellas. You're a mate. How have you been? Grand. I, um, I received my pink slip from uh, Gracie or Thankwall. Pink slip? Is that code? I've been fired. No longer the PR agent for uh, Skaven. Oh, man, that's... I mean, we were joking about it, but that's a hard pill to swallow. Sorry, mate. It is, mate, yeah. I mean, normally they just kill off their employees, so in a way I kind of did all right. But, um, but yeah, I am now a free agent. Oh, dude, mate. Nothing worse than getting a pink slip from a six-foot rat. (laughs) Ow. (laughs) Ouch. Yeah. Do you think they've got like you know how cats have got like barbed penises? Do you think rats have got the same thing? Like wow, that was less slip. than a minute. That was less than a minute, and we're already <laughs> on animal cocks. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, pink slip from a skaven, pink slip from a rat. That's that's. I mean, laid off by a horse is the nearest equivalent. <laughs> <laughs> or sodomized by a marmot. <laughs> <laughs> Too far? Ooh, Too far. Okay, all right. I would like it to be noted that I have avoided referring to another particular burrowing animal. It would be very easy given the good nature of this chat. But like a badger, Ben? Like a badger? <laughs> Maybe? Hey, you yeah. said it. Yeah, we don't want to badger you about it. So. Hey. Oh, there he is. The <laughs> shit that's Darren face. But anyway, I'm I'm now. I'm now a free agent. I mean, Chris, we spoke uh, maybe last episode. I understand yes. that you had some contacts uh, yes. In, yes. The, in the green skin nations you were maybe going to put me in touch with. Yeah, um, they have since recruited, so they're not actively hunting. I'll put in a good word. I'll put in a good word to see what they say. I do know the halflings are looking for representation, <laughs> though. But they can't because you've already taken that role, right? No, 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 mate. Um, this is awkward. So I got a call not long ago from Clan Scryer, and they are kind of offering me the PR job. <laughs> <laughs> Classic mate. Skaven move. Oh, what can I say? Are we what still cool? Oh, are we still well, cool? Well, it depends, it depends on whether you're going to take it or not. I mean... Hypothetically speaking, if I had already committed and signed the contract, how would you feel about that? I would feel okay about that as long as you had some sort of link to the orcs that would allow me to continue my career. I do, but they really like the style of Darren's delivery and branding approach. So, In that case, I am strongly against your moving to Clan Scryer as their PR agent. Also, this just assumes that I'm okay with orcs and they can bite my fucking arse. Well, it sounds like there's an opening. Well, not on not my arse. arse. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Leave my arse out of this. Hired by an orc. So, I mean, Darren has rejected, you know, the orc's interest. So it sounds like an opening to me, Crow. Do you want to put in a good word? Uh, sorry, Darren has um, turned down the interest. I, I, yeah, I have, Why would you do uh, I that? have rejected because I received a better offer from the Nagashazar Cloud Computing Company. <laughs> All I can say is that, Darren, you and I are in, in a, a hot property right now. We are in high demand, mate. It sucks yep. to be Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, it does suck to be me. All right, well, this who is- knew being handsome would be a negative? <laughs> yeah, I know, man. Listen, Ben, I, of course, I'll put in a good word with the Orcs, but I'm pretty sure that offer from the Halflings is there for you waiting. I mean, you'd have to <laughs> kind of crawl into those boardrooms um, because you're massive. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe some sort of like video conferencing 
setup would would be for the best or maybe, maybe like a surrogate maybe. you know they could yeah. like wear a surrogate yeah, yeah, they could like nominate a halfling and like strap a <laughs> strap on, <laughs> strap a camera to his head and like a, 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 a I thought TV you were going to say so. strap a halfling to your head. I was like, that's not going to make things any easier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't feel like I'm getting off to a great start on the whole halfling PR thing. We'll get you there, bro. We, we'll, we'll get you a new position. We'll get you a new position. We'll work right. on it. We'll work okay. on it. We'll work All on right. it. So. Yeah. All right. Well, on that okay. joyous note, Crow, what did we cover last month? Oh man, last month we finally got to the end of the Journey of the Skaven, which has been actually, in all seriousness, an amazing journey through Skaven lore and history. We ran through the four great clans. Um, and in fact, Ben, I'm going to put you on the spot. We're going to play a bit of Jeopardy here. It's not going to be too hard. I imagine you're going to score quite hard here. I'm going to describe the characteristics of the clans and you're going to tell me which clan they're from, okay? Excellent. Go for it. Okay, so this should be pretty easy. Mad scientists, tunnel fighting weapons such as the warp fire thrower, poisoned wind globes. Who is Clan Scryer? Yes, there you go. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, cool. Here we go. Um, bit of a tougher one. I don't think you should get it, though, if you've been listening. Uh, the beast masters of Skaven kind. Rat ogres, abominations. What speciality do Clan Mulder have? Yeah, or who is Clan Mulder? That would, would would have sufficed. Yeah, well done. I think the Welsh thing gave it away. I would argue my last. question was actually a much better suited to that statement of specialities. So shut your face. This is, this is my quiz, and I'll cry <laughs> if I want to. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Number three: the ninjas, the assassins, the messengers. Who is Clan Badger? No. Who is Clan Eshin? No, the correct response was these are the, the characteristics of Clan Eshin. Oh God, you make my <laughs> blood boil! <laughs> no, well done. You've got that. You've got that. Three for three. Right, last one. Oh. Can you do this? I think you're going to get this one. The plague mongers of the Skaven plague monks, or the Skaven <laughs> plague monks. Skaven. <laughs> are you saying lots of plagues? M- the thing monks. is, I'm just I'm 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 just reading through what Darren read without re- pre-reading it, so it's coming out really disjointed. So, <laughs> plague mongers of the Skaven plague monks, anatical sensor bearers, filth catapults, your mum. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely heard all of those words before, but not in that order. Who is Clan Pestilence? Boom! There you go. Ding ding and ding they ding. They make ding. up the four great clans of Skaven kind. Dope. What do I win? And it's this kind of riveting content that will guarantee your success on Patreon. <laughs> on what? Uh, oh God! <laughs> Have you learned nothing? <laughs> on who? It's like it's like a living death sentence working with me, isn't it? <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> so that was it in a nutshell. Can we park rap and? Push aside Skaven now for a little while. Is that is that allowed? Is that is that is I that think what so. we're doing? Can we move on? Given that we've covered all the broad and some of the finer details of Skaven, I think that would be perfectly okay. But they will be appearing every now and then because their influence is felt all over Warhammer World. Of course we will. Of course we will. Indeed. Um, so who's next? I mean, where are we going? Well, we we had a, a, if you'll forgive the phrase, a toss-up between the dwarves and the greenskins, and the greenskins won. Woo! All right. So it is the greenskins of Warhammer, the orcs, goblins, squigs, trolls, giants, the whole kit and caboodle. Although not really giants, they're not really greenskins. Let's get nice. some greenskins in us. Oh no, wait, hold on. So, yeah, so you said giants and ogres, are they greenskins? No, but I thought, the I giants, they giants. Grey skins. Uh, <laughs> Grey skins. What color are they? I'm not sure actually, because there's more than a few of them. I think there might be four. So maybe we'll call them four skins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bungle! What are you Gross. doing? <laughs> <laughs> One skin. <laughs> <laughs> So, let us start with this. 
from the 10 episodes we've already recorded, what can you guys already tell me about the Greenskins, about the orcs and goblins? That they've recently hired a new PR agent. Call? Who we don't know about. <laughs> oh. Who we don't know about. <laughs> the Greenskins, they reside, I want to say, the Badlands, and is it the Darklands as well? You are 100% correct, sir. So both areas, Badlands and the Darklands, two areas. The Badlands, let me remember this, or is it the Darklands? There's uh, one of the areas is kind of... Um, uh, da, 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 da. Here it is, it's ladies and gents. Kind of like South Asia going between going between like the Middle East and, and Cathay or the Oriental. Yes, that's the Darklands. That's the yeah. Darklands, yeah. The Badlands are south they're more south aren't they and they straddle the border princes and places like that uh yes they are below the border princes so they're between what okay. we would commonly call the old world and the land of the dead so okay. it's that happy yeah. little yeah. sandwich yes where the uh, a lot of green skin tribes dwell but orcs are i mean the word prolific gets used a lot when discussing orcs, because those fuckers are everywhere in Warhammer. And mm. that has a lot to do with how they reproduce. But we shall get Chris, to that. Chris, I have to say, that was that was pretty impressive. I mean, it kind of feels well, like the only thing that you've paid attention to over the last 10 episodes has been the stuff to do with orcs. I mean, where was that level of recollection when it came to Skaven? Well, you know, as I've said before, Ben, fuck Skaven. Uh, sorry, fuck Skavan. <laughs> Do you know what, Chris? I just got fired. I agree with you. <laughs> mm. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, I take that back. Uh, Clan Scryer. Uh, sorry, slip of the tongue there. <laughs> oh, I think they've. These just, are the kind uh, of bold marketing moves you can expect from me. These, you know, really out there, <laughs> snappy, provocative, you know. <laughs> This is this is this is what you get. This is what you get when you employ a on point marketing manager like myself, Clan Scryer. I know it's it's controversial, it goes against the grain, but it, it provokes emotion. It, it you does, know it doesn't discussion. make a huge amount of sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but you know. What what I love though is the fact that uh, reverse psychology plays brilliantly into the kind of scaven mindset. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I've just got a raging semi for the greenskins. That's that's all I can say. <laughs> I, I really don't uh, know how to proceed now. Okay. How about from the start? One would assume carefully. So, yes. So that's broadly where the the greenskin races are most prolific. Can can either of you remember the origins of the greenskins? Oh. Was there an origin well, story? Or do you mean geographically their origins? Well, anything. I mean, I know that the bat that throws a bone here. (laughs) (laughs) So once upon a time, no, I do do remember that the Darklands is the is where the majority of the Greenskins reside, isn't it? There's a a big population in the Badlands, but it's predominantly the Darklands that's like their their main stomping ground. Is that right? That is true currently, yes, but was not always true. Right. I think that's a big fat no. We have no idea, Darren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the greenskins just simply appeared. <laughs> Shazam. Seven and a half thousand years ago. There wow. are no records at all about where they came from. Were there proto greenskins? Did they evolve? Were they made? But there are three specific theories. Uh, that float around the interweb net as to how they arrived on Warhammer World. And they're all linked by the fact that the greenskin races are, in fact, sentient mushrooms. (laughs) (laughs) Are you you high? Uh (laughs) I I ate some sentient mushrooms before I came in. No, they're a fungal-based life form. So they don't look like mushrooms, but they are a fungus. Um, So they reproduce asexually, and they reproduce by shedding spores. We're talking about orcs right now, yeah? That's that's how they reproduce. Yeah, all green skins. If anyone's seen the first Lord of the Rings movie, The Fellowship, 
Do you remember the Urukai being cut out of the ground by Saruman? They're like yeah, they were sure, yeah. born in, in these kind of sacks in the ground. That's how Warhammer orcs, whether it's fantasy, Age of Sigmar, or 40k, that's how they are born, in quotes. They are, in fact, grown. Wow. Under the ground. Under the ground, yeah. Holy shit. And there's a great illustration of one from a game called Gorka Morka, which shows the life cycle of an orc. And it shows one, it's like a cross section of one being developed in the shade under a rock with a mushroom sticking out the top. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's quite so adorable. Cool. So with that knowledge, the three theories are that the spores were in a meteor and the meteor crashed into Warhammer. Why? There was a interstellar spore rain. And because our listeners can't see, I'm doing the universal waggly fingers rain gesture. Or they were inadvertently brought to Warhammer by the old ones. That looked like the dove from above. (laughs) The dove from above. No, the dove from above is this. It's the hands facing towards you. Oh, that's it, right. So it's the hands the other way, right? Yeah, I've always been a crow from below guy. (laughs) 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 Regardless of how they arrived, the spores of the green skin covered the face of Warhammer. And thus the first kind of generation were born. Now... All of this is interesting because it ties back to a theory about green skins from Warhammer 40k in that they are a genetically engineered race built purely for combat. And so they have a genetic memory, which in the 40k version of the orcs allows them, all their technology looks the same. All their skills are the same, regardless of where they are in the universe. There's no real technological advancement. It, really, there, there's a couple of kind of big jumps, but th- that was more to progress storylines than it was to kind of highlight the orc culture. Sorry, can I just pick that apart a bit? You said like there's, they've got like genetic memory. So throughout yes. the cosmos, throughout the different continents, wherever they spread in all the different Warhammer universes, they have this kind of innate native knowledge of their own technology and does that also go for kind of like their base instincts as well? Well, I guess it does. They're all just kind of angry fighting peoples. Mushrooms. Is that what you meant? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, regardless of where you are in the Warhammer world, a tribe of orcs or goblins is pretty much structured the same way. It looks the same. Their weapons look the same. Uh, They are, Leadership is the same. Their tactics are pretty much the same. It's usually split down the middle. They've got two types of combat, which we'll address in a little while. But the fundamental principle is that they were created by an unknown race to be a warrior race. They're able to drop on a planet. They're able to just... I mean, if one greenskin spore lands on a planet, it's almost impossible to get rid of the orcs that will eventually come out of that. Right. They'll God. multiply like Catholic rabbits. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like weeds. So what yeah. what would be the point in creating something like that? I, I mean, I can only assume that if something did create the orcs in that format, then whatever they were creating them to fight was exponentially worse. Well, what they were created to fight actually has a name, and that name is Necrons. They were created oh. to stand against the... Effectively, they were used as cannon fodder in the War in Heaven, as it's known in 40k, which was the great battle between the Necrons and the Old Ones. Right. The Necrons being the undead? Yes, the kind of robotic undead. The r- robotic undead. So this is conjecture, and it only really is kind of sets a, a broader context for greenskins in Warhammer fantasy because all of the traits are the same except they don't have guns so is it uh-huh. is it possible then that the the idea could explain how the greenskins got into warhammer world if warhammer world is a planet in the 40k universe as previously theorized 100% But it also just simply could be a copy and paste of kind of a rough origin for a race. I mean, I think we made it, or I think I made it clear 
a few episodes back that Games Workshop pretty much killed the idea of it being a planet yeah. within the 40k universe. Yeah. But so can I ask then, what do you think is the the correct origin story? What do you choose to believe, Darren? I think the most likely origin is they landed on a meteor in terms of how they got there. In terms of how they were created, I have no idea. You okay. mean they, they came via a meteor? They didn't land on a meteor? Yes. Meteor crashed. No, <laughs> they're just fully, fully grown orcs just straddling a meteor. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Jump. <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> As anyone who knows Barak Bar will tell you, it's a place where you can enjoy many of the good things in life. Bustling marketplaces, dwarven beers, and the constant threat of greenskin raids. Situated in the north of the Badlands, we use it as the start of an event-filled itinerary. Barak Var Cruises. Take a leisurely yet terrifying two-week trip down the coast of greenskin-infested Badlands, punctuated by exciting day trips such as needing to fight for your life against the scrote-cutter tribes of Dragonback Mountains, go wyvern spotting at Mount Bloodhorn, or giant hunting on our award-winning free-for-all gore safari. Each of our well-appointed pleasure frigates includes armoured staterooms, balcony-mounted heavy crossbows, complementary formal armour, all-you-can-eat boar roasts, bottomless flagons of Bugman's 6X, and complimentary life insurance. Join us for 14 days of heart-stopping adventure in the heart of greenskin country itself. Barak Var Cruises. Toughen the fuck up, manling. So... Greenskins arrived, I'm going to suggest, via Spores on a Meteor, which is going to definitely be the title of my biography. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your first sex tape. <laughs> it is widely believed that, regardless of how they got there, their place of landing, in quotes, was somewhere between the Mountains of Morn and Cathay. So that is... Uh, if you'll recall your geography, you start the old world, head east, you get into the dark lands, head east again, you get into the mountains of Morn, where the the ogre kingdoms are, and it was also mm. the ancestral home of the sky giants. So it was on the border of the mountains of Morn on the eastern side, with Cathay and Ind and so forth. There's a very famous quote by, I think it's by an orc called Morglum Necksnapper, who said that, go and tell your masters that the East is green. That's wow. cool. That sounds racist, doesn't it? Or th that's where they were concentrated for the first, what shall we say, three and a half thousand years. They did, there were expeditions and armies and going around Warhammer world, but because they don't really have a developed culture, their culture now, the culture in the present day in Warhammer is their culture as it was the year after they uh, existed for the first time. They don't keep written records. So they have a kind of an oral tradition, but it disappears after a couple of generations. There's no real stories that last within orc culture for a significant amount of time unless you have a great war boss, a great leader of an orc tribe or an orc wa, as it's called, which is a huge army of hundreds of tribes of orcs and goblins. And the wa is always spelt the same way. It's W-A-A-A-G-H. Wa. Wa. No, 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 not wa. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> I just imagine a child crying when I see that word spelled out. That's all. So they don't have, which makes sense, they don't really have scholars and academics, do they? So No. And therefore don't really have much history and law, if you like. Oh, I'm sure they, they have a rich history and law, but it's just not documented. Yeah, 100%. And in fact, the only real recorded history for them is when they interact with races that keep a recorded history. 
Um, ah, I see. And the first mention of them was by a group of dark elf slavers, and that's around about 4,000 years before present. And it's when slavers encountered a tribe of night goblins, and they were trying to get them onto the ships, onto the Black Arks, so that they could be used as slaves in the mines and fields of Nagrond. Wow. How did they? Did they just like tempt them with like little, little, little nuggets of cheese? Come on. Come by. Come on. They promised them really, really sexy looking mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> as spiders, there's as spiders on this boat. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's night goblins, Chris. Night goblins don't go for as spiders. Sorry, no, they go for. Uh, May anybody uh, goes for as spiders. Well, you, you encounter as spiders once and then you go for them. <laughs> so, First one's always yeah, free. Yeah. So they, the night elves, the dark elves, they wanted to enslave the night goblins. They wanted to use them as laborers in their own yeah. caves and mines. That seems a bit out of character for like a noble species. They, these are dark elves, Chris. Oh, right. Yeah. The incestuous ones. Got it. Yeah, fine. Cool. <laughs> But uh, they, they were <laughs> fuck your mother and slave a night goblin. It's much, much the same thing, right? Malekith. Malekith. <laughs> Whoa! Look at that knowledge. Look at that callback. God, yeah. Chris. The dark elves I'm were ultimately fired. unsuccessful because the night goblins tipped huge canisters of madcap mushrooms, which is their psychoactive mushrooms, into the squig pens. <laughs> 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 that sounds like a recipe for chaos. You want to see something really funny, guys? Watch <laughs> this. <laughs> Hold my beer. Squigs are a cross between a pig and a Tyrannosaurus Rex with thalidomide. <laughs> Games Workshop Fucking Monster hell. Development Department strikes again. <laughs> Jeff, it's been too long. <laughs> to quote Billy Conley, it's a, a, a row of teeth, two legs, and an asshole. That's what a squig is. Nice. It looks like a really angry space hopper. So what uh, <laughs> So what happens when you give it a bunch of fucking magic mushrooms? Well, uh, I Mixed think... Mixed response. It, you get some who go off their tits, and then you get the others that just cower <laughs> in the corner. Yeah. Like me, and go home to my mum. I mom can see the of- colors, man. I'll try not to use too much hyperbole, but the squigs went fucking mental. Uh, and the ca- the cave turned into a sea of teeth. And it's one of the few recorded incidents where dark elves ran away. They simply ran onto their black arcs and fucked off. Uh, squigs. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have loved and to psychoactive that. drugs. Yeah, that's the first recorded in- uh, recorded encounter with an orc and or goblin in the history of other races. It might just be a good idea to break down the different types of green skin that we have in Warhammer. There's three broad true green skin classes, and then there's the kind of beasts and monsters that attach themselves regularly to orc and goblin tribes. So everyone will be familiar with orcs. They look like muscle-bound football hooligans clad in brown leather, looking like, if you can imagine the cop from the village people, but in a kind of Mr. Heidi kind of way. (laughs) (laughs) I I cannot, no. Oh, sorry, no. If you can imagine the, the cop from the village people, but it's Mr. Jekyll. Wow. Yeah. Like... Like highway patrolmen with the with the helmet yeah, and the aviators and the mustache. Not entirely, but yes. Let's just say yes. <laughs> why, why, why? Why the village people? I'm sorry. That seems like not the greatest thing. I just see this big gay orc. <laughs> <No. laughs> it's like, which is fine, but I just feel that's not an accurate representation. It's not so much a big gay orc, it's more of a kind of big camp orc. Big <laughs> mincing orc. Now please put your hands. Please put your hands on the bonnet of the car. <laughs> Did you just say mincing orcs? <laughs> big mincing orc. Oh hello. Hello. <laughs> a road attempt. Who's up for a fight? Oh. Yeah, I think you need to, to provide a different visualization. Because yeah. it just makes them sound Something harmless. That's a bit and- more- 
right, something that's a bit more universal. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> if you okay, so with or everyone's familiar with or broadly familiar with the concept of an orc, if you can imagine Conan the Barbarian, green and even more angry. There we nice. go with a mustache. Yeah, with 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 a mustache <laughs> and assless chaps. <laughs> and assless um, chaps. <laughs> <laughs> so there are in Warhammer there are three broad types of orc. There's the common orc, which or cork effectively cork. <laughs> it's your uh, it's your uh, run of the mill orc who looks like a shaved gorilla in armor with what's called a chopper, which is their main type of weapon. Pause for Chris's inappropriate comment. Now, all, all I wanted to pick on was like you've explained how the orcs look in three different guises. They look like the policemen from the village people. <laughs> they look like a shaved gor- gorilla, or they look like Conan the Barbarian. Which one? Darren is it? just has a list of these different descriptions for orcs. He's just reeling them off here. Actually, they look like <laughs> a horse pretended to be dressed up like a cow, shaved like a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having flashbacks of the chaos pantheons here. <laughs> Has one of them got aardvark tits? <laughs> aardvark tits. I don't even know what they look like. <laughs> Nobody aardvark. does, Chris. I mean, do they have tits or do they have udders? How do aardvarks work? <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so there are broadly three types of orcs. There's the common orc, which is this huge muscle bound kind of green shaved gorilla in scraps of leather and metal with a huge chopper which is a sword not a penis uh, and <laughs> there are then the savage orcs which are warriors from the amazon in quotes so these are orcs that just dressed in loincloths have got tattoos and war paint on and kind of a boa which is in fact a boa constrictor Um, And they, again, use similar type weapons and are usually in a frenzied state, as you would be (gasps) if you have snakes on you all the time. Oh, I thought these were the... Are these not the ass spiders, guys? No, that's the forest goblins. Oh, right. So their ass spiders are, in fact, snakes. Ass snakes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. Ass snakes, that's amazing. And then the final type of orc is what's referred to as the black orc. And these are even bigger, angrier, with shorter tempers. And these are, in fact, a creation of the Chaos Dwarves. So these guys were created in the Darklands by the Chaos Dwarves. And I think within a single generation, the black orcs rebelled, killed as many Chaos Dwarves as they could, and then fled from the Darklands. So they're now dotted all over. So those are wow, the kind wow. of three broad types of orcs. Uh, so we've got uh, corks, uh, sorks, and blorks. <laughs> you beat me to it. Yes. Um, yeah, the, the, the Black Orc story sounds um, very like Siegfried and Roy, kind of turning on your own master situation. <laughs> <laughs> so are we, are we now saying that Black Orcs are like shaved tigers? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> shaved white tigers? escape from the zoo and then there was no stopping them multiplying after that oops yeah. so that was orcs now we we will launch ourselves happily into goblins uh, <laughs> in describing a goblin <laughs> if you can imagine a halfling so imagine frodo malnourished and green and as evil as they are anyway wow So again, there's multiple types. We've got the common goblin. Now, the common goblin, I think, outstrips all the other greenskin races in terms of their numbers. And I think there's something like four or five times the number of common goblins as there are all the other greenskin races put together. Um, Oh, wow. But still not as many as Skaven, right? Skaven are just rife. No, yeah, I think Skaven are the the most prolific race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of those common goblins discovered ass spiders uh, and then transitioned, if you'll excuse the phrase, into being forest goblins. So these are ones that worship spiders. They ride spiders as steeds, possibly as sexual partners as well. uh, And they have very large spiders called arachnatrox, which they use as engines of war. Some other common goblins 
went into a cave and discovered that they liked it underground. And they became the night goblins, which are the second most prolific type of goblin. And these are the ones that wear monks' robes, but they're all kind of dyed black. They're the ones that have access to legions of squigs, of these cave uh-huh. squigs, which they herd into battle, learning from the uh, happy event that the dark elves encountered. They feed them mushrooms, drives them into frenzy, and they plow into enemy ranks. The night goblins also have what's called squig hoppers, which are squigs that they ride as space hoppers. Uh, and they are just simply <laughs> <That's> hilarious. <awesome. laughs> Do the squigs ever um, like a turn on the goblins? Or are they domesticated? All the time. Yeah, a squig herder is one of the most dangerous jobs in the goblin career path. The squig farmers, that kind of idea. There are also various other kind of strains of uh, goblin. The three most common of those minor strains are... The hobgoblins of the east. Uh, so these are chocolatey, uh, nutty, chocolatey hobnoblins. <laughs> these are <laughs> hobgobs. Oh, in terms of size, they are somewhere in between uh, a goblin and an orc. So they're they're slightly bigger than a, a goblin, a, a bit more muscly, and a bit more sneaky, a bit more aggressive. Uh, and in Games Workshop, they're based on the Mongol hordes. Their dress, they followed their kind of leaders are the great cans of the hobgoblin race. Wow. Wow. Cool. That's cool. And then going the other way, the two smallest types of goblin, really they're kind of their own thing, but they get lumped in with goblins, are the noblars. <laughs> That's G-N-O-B-L-A-R-S. Gnoblars. Okay, cool. Gnoblars. And these are the servants of the ogre kingdoms. Now, in the origin myths of the ogre kingdoms, when ogres were created, they were a twinned race. They were created with halflings. And the halflings were created as the cooks for the oh, ogre right. races. Yes. Yeah. But then they were like, I don't, I don't want that amazing dish you just made because I just ate that mountain over there. So I'm a bit full. Yeah, the f- futile role. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the halflings, they were either discharged Gross. Or they rebelled, and their place was taken over by the Noblars, which were a diminutive race, as I said, of goblins. The final mm-hmm. kind of goblinoid race are the Snotlings. These are the cheeky chappies, the kind of wisecracks. They, they're really the kind of Chris's of the greenskin race. <laughs> um, Chris, you should totally be a PR <laughs> for goblins. Oh my God, that would be amazing. What branch of goblin are they, sorry? Snotlings. Snotlings. Nice. I even like the name. Yeah. Just as an interesting side note, and it's something that should perhaps attract you to them, is they have an amazing war engine, which is like these, you know, in the black and white movies, the old timey wagons on train tracks that the guys Uh, they do with a lever up and down, up and down. So they have one of them, but it's covered in blades and they drive it into the enemy ranks and just slaughter everyone. It's hilarious. Like kamikaze. Nice. It's called a snotling pump wagon. <laughs> 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 wow. Wow. The Swedish goblin pump wagon. <laughs> <laughs> One manual for a Swedish goblin <laughs> pump wagon written by <laughs> Kralen McCrallen face. It's not mine, baby, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> One book called Me and My Swedish <laughs> Swedish Sno- <laughs> Snotling <laughs> Snotling Pump Wagon. <laughs> alright, alright, just pass it over, just pass it over. All right, mate. <laughs> Written by Crow and McCrowface. <laughs> Those are the kind of bipedal sentient greenskin races. We then have the squigs, which sorry, before previously- we go to the squigs, can we just recap? So we've got common goblins and then noblars and snotlings below them in size wise, and then you have yeah. hobgoblins. Was there another one above hob in the bigger ones? No, just hobgoblins. Right. So there's four types then, yeah. No, six. 
So you've got common goblins, forest goblins, who are the spider guys. That's uh, right. Night goblins, who are the monk-robed squig humpers. You then right. have hobgoblins, which are bigger, and then snobling, <laughs> snobling. 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 You got snobling's. Snobling's. <laughs> it's not <laughs> really, really posh goblins. <laughs> yeah, snobling's. <laughs> so, <laughs> so are the forest goblins and the night goblins a similar size to the common goblin yes and then the hobgoblins are bigger and the snotlings yes. and the noblars are smaller yes 100 percent. Right. and where do the snoblars come in <laughs> the snoblars are the leaders of the noblars <laughs> they all have mustaches three-piece suits, and bowler hats. Amusingly, the Snoblars are the smallest uh, green skin race, but also the ones that look down on everyone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andy Pickles. Every year, hundreds of thousands of orcs are dying in needless conflicts all across the world. The disregard for green skin life has reached epidemic proportions. But the problem is much worse than you think. Spores are dying out. Massive stretches of spore cultures are simply ceasing to be, and we don't know why. You may have heard of a similar crisis in the world of bees, which scientists are calling colony collapse disorder. This is culture collapse disorder, and if left untreated, stands to completely wipe out the orcs in the next 30 years. We need to take action now, and you can help. For just 47 cents a day, plant a spore will plant a spore. That spore will become two spores, and those two will become four, etc, etc, orc. For just 47 cents a day, you can make a real difference. Take a stand with us. Say no to green skin annihilation. Let's save the orcs. Plant a spore. Fuck the bees. So, moving on from goblins, we get to squigs. There are really only kind of three main broad types of squig that is the cave squig which is about waist height on humans comes up to about waist height and looks like a, a two-legged angry red pit bull that's been inflated uh we then have the giant <laughs> ones <laughs> like a puffer fish yeah like a puffer <laughs> fish that's constantly gone off <laughs> You then have giant squigs that are about the size of a horse. Again, spherical, largely spherical, about the size of a horse. And then you have the colossal squigs that are about somewhere between the size of a horse and the size of a house. <laughs> it's quite a broad range, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it really depends on how many green skins a squig can eat and how many mushrooms it's given. Wow. Now, there are innumerable smaller kind of classes of squig, including the needle squig that looks like a huge needle with a tiny body at the end, which they give injections with. There's hair squigs, which are just tiny, tiny little bodies, huge mouths and an enormous hairy tail. And what happens there is the orcs will jab the, the squig's mouth on its head and it will get this lovely bouffant. Um, from the squig's tail. When you say hair squig, it makes it reminds me of those. I can't what you call them now, but they're like hair bands to tie your long hair back. Scrunchies. That's the one. Scrunchies. <laughs> scrunchies. The scrunchy squig. And what's the point of a hair squig? It's to give an orc hair. Pretty obvious. Oh, I see. I thought you meant it was just because it was so small. It was like a, ha a hair hair breadth. So it's like they're, they're like two pays for orcs. Yes, it's like a detachable ponytail. This is an actual <laughs> thing. This is You're not just making this up as you go along. No, a hair squig. I will find a picture and put it in the show notes. What? An, a, an orc will actively find out a, a hair squig and put it on its bald head. Yeah, and it will bite in 
And I think, if I'm remembering correctly, the thing actually dies and calcifies into the orc's skull. Um, wow, wow. So it becomes a permanent kind of top knot. And and did they do that for are they are they did that for like vanity reasons, mating? Oh, they don't mate, they just spore everywhere, don't they? Why would you do yeah. that? I suspect it's a status symbol. Okay, yeah. I swear I watched an episode of um Blue Planet with David Attenborough in the deep episodes where there was two fishes that one just sucked onto the side of the other one and then effectively it started sharing its blood and it just yeah. effectively dies. It just becomes this kind of like appendage Organ. attached to the yeah. side. Yeah. So it's a kind of, there's a, a symbiosis there to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. then it dies. So the, uh, the squig, the squig gets blood and oxygen and the orc gets a lovely, lovely head of hair. Poof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A dope <laughs> cut, bro. Be- because I'm worth it. <laughs> uh, squigs are quite prevalent in a uh, green skin society so they're they're used for everything anything we would use a, an implement for there's usually a squig you can find that will do the same job there's a squig for that uh, yeah got it <laughs> squig for that <laughs> oh mate that is an advert and a half like <laughs> <laughs> introducing the swiss multi-squig <laughs> <laughs> you can order it from squig fix direct <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> the largest war engine that uses squigs is called the Mangler. And what that is effectively two colossal squigs that are being chained together and poked in the balls with a taser squig and shot towards <laughs> enemy lines. <laughs> Using a catapult squig. <laughs> 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 Quick, where's the taser squig? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh God, these things are great. Yeah, so versatile, man. It would be great if you got like you give somebody a Christmas present of like a grow your own squig starter kit, and it had like just the spores, and then like ten different molds that you could change it into like whatever implement you. Need. <laughs> I need to hold my door open, squig. <laughs> yeah, the plant pot squig. <laughs> The professional reference monitor, Squig. (laughs) Now, it should be noted that the name Squig is actually from the term Squiggly Beast. Squiggly Beast. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Squiggly Beast. Of course it is. Thanks for clearing that one up. That was driving me mad. (laughs) (laughs) Driving me nuts like a steering wheel between my legs. It was driving my squiggly nuts. (laughs) (laughs) Squiggly nuts. My squads, squads, squads. <laughs> the the kind of larger squigs used in combat are the kind of attack squigs, the cave squigs. But then you've got tons of minor race of squigs. You've got the bag squigs, which is effectively it's that spherical bipedal thing, but it's got a huge extendable lower jaw uh, or the skin, so it's like a pelican. So they use that oh, yeah. to carry all their shit in. <laughs> or like a hamster squig, <laughs> or a mule squig, and the, the squig, and the, and and it won't the bag squig. It won't eat the whatever you put in there. Or do they have to train it and like discipline? Yeah, it doubles. It doubles up it. as a uh, a mobile toilet. You know, <laughs> you think you've got a crap job? <laughs> <laughs> Just breathe through the nose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't swallow. The, the, the toilet paper squig comes along is like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the condom squig, but we'll draw a veil. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. Uh, with teeth for extra grip. <laughs> for her pleasure. Yeah, I, I turn mine inside out. <laughs> and they're like, I don't know why so, we need these. We just spore anyway, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> Literally, fuck it. <laughs> Ugg, Ugg, can I be the man tonight? <laughs> oh, the morning after squig. <laughs> oh. 
I think the pro- the profile the the condom squig just fits over the entire orc, so he can't spore anywhere. <laughs> It's like that scene out of Naked Gun, like, full yeah. body condom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, fuck. Right, okay. <laughs> well, I can just reassure you, we will definitely be doing one whole episode on squigs. Yeah, we exciting. need it. We I need, need to get it. my head around this concept. <laughs> Those are the three main green skin races. There are then other monsters and animals and beasts that are routinely attach themselves to the tribes of green skins, whether they're orcs or goblins. The most common then for orcs is the boar, the war boar, which is this, well, it's a boar that the orcs ride into battle, probably on a saddle squig. <laughs> <laughs> The goblins ride wolves. And, interestingly, the second miniature I ever purchased was a twin pack of goblin wolf riders. Nice. Oh, I was so much younger and had so much more money. (laughs) Um, So besides the squigs, boars and wolves are the two most common animals encountered with orcs and goblins within greenskin tribes. You then have trolls, which really break into three types. The kind of generic troll, uh, which is this grey-green monstrosity of Scandinavian lore. You then have the stone trolls, which live underground with the night goblins, and these are blue and resistant to magic because they pretty much just eat rocks. Uh, And then you have the river (laughs) trolls, which look kind of like a, a bat fucked a frog and gave it growth serum. These huge things are about 10 feet high, scaly, ugly-looking thing that vomits sulfuric acid on everyone uh, and dissolves (laughs) them. And there's a great piece of art, which I'll put in the show notes, that shows uh, empire troops being dissolved by a river troll. As as a single river troll, quite a force to be reckoned with, then? Could that, like, take on a battalion of blokes? Yeah, in in the kind of lore, a, a troll can only truly be killed by fire. So it can be damaged and chopped up, but it will regenerate and eventually uh, puke, crush, and or eat you. Unless Uh it meets its kind of final death by fire. Okay. Kill it with fire. Got it. So if you cut it into a bunch of pieces, what would happen? Like, would it just, the the pieces regrow? I'm not entirely sure that's ever really been addressed. What I'll do is I'll research that and get back to you in the next episode. But my gut feeling would be that the things kind of try and uh, recombine. If you were to cut them up and keep the parts separate. I mean, that sounds like a lot of hassle. Just burn it, man. Just kill it with fire. So in addition to trolls, every now and then, a giant will be hired or captured and sent into war alongside the orcs. Um, It's an interesting combination of options there. He's either captured or hired and then he's sent into war if he's captured and sent into war surely if he doesn't want to fight he would just turn around and fuck off like who's going to stop him he's massive well they would do what i like to call recapture how do you how do you capture a giant i don't know get a load of orcs to stand on the on each other's shoulders in a big coat (laughs) with a big pair of fake tits (laughs) yeah that makes sense if I was a giant, a squig. I'd fight there's for a that. squig for that. I'm sure there's, there's a squig for that. <laughs> it's the capture giant squig. Exactly. I, I still can't believe neither of you went for the other direction for the uh, breast implant squig. <laughs> the silicone implant squig. <laughs> Angry implant squig. <laughs> Makes a pair of formidable breasts, but they both have teeth. <laughs> Yikes. That's some titties you can keep. yeah so giants are either captured or hired and brought to war alongside them giants in general are pretty slow-witted and really just enjoy destroying things and it's this kind of mentality of destruction that will attract some of them to the tribes of greenskins because greenskins live to destroy shit Uh, well actually they live to fight it's what uh, keeps them going. It's their motivation. 
the only other kind of regularly seen beast then is the, the wyvern or wyvern. I know we had previously discussions as to how that is pronounced, but you'll find that specifically orc war bosses and head shamans will ride a wyvern uh, or wyvern into battle. The most famous being Azag the Slaughterer, who we will get to in another episode because he is an interesting figure that continues the story of Nagash, shall we say. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. So that in broad strokes, are the, these are the kind of beings that would be found in these orc and goblin tribes. Very much the barbaric idea of tribalism. There's no culture really beyond might is right. The tougher an opponent an orc faces, if they are successful, if the orc is successful, the orc becomes physically bigger. And so mm. you, you get these stages where the leaders of the orcs, the orc war bosses, are about the size of an ogre. They're enormous. They literally level up when they've defeated an enemy. 100%. Literally level up, mm. yes. Wow. And does that apply? Does that mentality and and model of them you know, leveling up after defeat, does that apply to both goblins as well and trolls? Did, did the same thing happen to those, or is that just the orcs? I think d- trolls really are kind of bipedal beasts. There's no real okay. motivation yeah. beyond kind of shelter and hunger, that kind of idea yeah. for uh, trolls. Okay. Goblins become, as goblins solve more problems, they're more a uh, kind of intellectual advancement than physical advancement. Uh-huh. I think simply put, goblins are smarter than orcs, but they are mm-hmm. a lot shorter and a lot more delicate. That the, sure. Their physicality doesn't change. So it, uh, that, that kind of like leveling up, defeating of the, you know, finding hard enemies to beat and defeat and then get stronger from, that only really applies to the orcs and no, none of the other green skin races. Uh, yes, that in, in okay. terms of physicality, sure. yes. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I mean, there, sure. there's one notable exception, which was a goblin war boss called Grom the Paunch, who <clears> is this morbidly obese goblin and the reason he's morbidly obese is that he ate a huge amount of troll flesh, which was constantly mm. regenerating in his stomach. So he never needed to mm. eat again, but his stomach was just, it, it kept being enormous. Wow. Wow. But he was one of the most successful goblin warlords in existence. Shit. Good for him. And I think, gents, that's as good enough place to stop as any other. Wowzers. <laughs> That was so cool. Oh man. So Chris, what yeah. kind of what kind of green skin do you most relate to? Is it a squig? Um, I think it's a squig. I was gonna say, actually, the squigs sound a lot more fun. But keeping it orc, <laughs> keeping it orcish, I, it sounds a bit boring, but a good vanilla common orc. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Is I, the savage orcs are pretty cool, they got character, but there's just something about that kind of straight up common orc vibes that's just yeah i like yeah. that yeah yeah you know so st- they're, they're all, they're all cut down. from the same cloth really aren't they they've just got slightly different stylings slightly different taste in squigs but they're all really cut from the same cloth <laughs> you know um what about you darren actually no ben uh what about you yeah whoa 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 what do we uh what <laughs> excuse are we, me what are we why are we asking darren anything what do i so I really like the sound of the uh, the black orcs. They sound like super dark. I guess they're kind of are they tinged by chaos because they were created by the chaos dwarfs. No, I think that they were bred for strength, endurance, and aggression above and beyond what an orc would normally have. So they were meant to be beasts of burden and cannon fodder. I mean, right. so, sorry, bred for what strength? Uh, strength, endurance. Those are um, virtues that I, you know, that I would subscribe to as well myself. So I, yeah, I, I can, I can relate. I can relate. So these they, black they orcs are they are they a bit stronger and better than the normal orcs in terms of their, you know, hardiness and stuff? Are they are they a bit more elite? Yes. Um, okay. It's not just their strength; it comes down to discipline as well. They're more disciplined. They're more focused. Right, I see. Okay, okay. They are the superior. So, blorks are stronger than corks. And sorks. <laughs> and sorks. 
yeah, yeah. Well, go on, Dar. What's your flavor of green skin? I like hobgoblins. I think they're definitely mm-hmm. they're they're kind hobgoblin. of least described and most interesting. There was a game that came out in the I think it was the early nineties, maybe in the late eighties, called Chaos Marauders, and it had hobgoblins in there, and the regiment was called the Sneaky Gits. <laughs> and so these are kind of sk- skulky backstabbing shits and i thought that would, they're pretty cool although that's really cool. although that said i do like the kind of war machiney side of common goblins because they have this thing called a doom diver which is if a goblin was dressed as batman and fired out of a big catapult <laughs> a squid catapult <laughs> squid catapult <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's all from us. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to find out more about the topics we've discussed in this podcast, you can find all the reference articles in the show notes and on our website at layingdownthelore.com. You can also reach us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And just a reminder, we are now on Patreon. So if you're keen to join our Discord clan and shoot the shit with us, or you're excited to hear our bonus podcast series, Chunks of Dar, in which we grill Darren on topics covered in this podcast, or you just really want us to start releasing content more frequently, head over to patreon.com forward slash laying down the lore and sign up today. We'll be back again next month displaying just how little Chris and I know. Until then, ta-ta. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-